In this video, we're going to continue our introduction to the idea of thermodynamics with a discussion on how to draw enthalpy diagrams, basically quick little graphs that visually represent how heat energy is moved around during a chemical reaction. Here's a quick list of the learning objectives in the video itself. Uh, we'll do a quick review of what enthalpy actually is, just to make sure the ideas are fresh in your mind. Uh, we'll then define what enthalpy diagrams are and talk about how you actually go about creating them. And last but not, we'll end up with a couple examples. Uh, enthalpy diagrams will be something we use throughout the unit. Uh, here you can see actually an example of a complex enthalpy diagram. Uh, and this diagram is showing how multiple pathways uh, of performing a chemical reaction all lead to the same result or the same net change in enthalpy or delta H uh, that shows up right here. This is something later on we'll identify via Hess's law, but what I'm trying to show here is that we can show that concept graphically using what we'll soon call an enthalpy diagram. Let's begin then with a discussion of what enthalpy is itself. As a reminder, this is something we've already seen, so we'll go through this relatively quickly. Uh, if you recall, enthalpy is the amount of heat energy and work that is absorbed or released from a chemical reaction to the surroundings. Uh, the symbol we typically use for enthalpy is the symbol delta H, or the changes in heat energy, and the unit we typically use is the unit of kilojoules per mole, how much energy is released per mole of reactant. These reactions can be either described as exothermic, which, require, which corresponds to releasing energy, or they can be described as endothermic, which corresponds to absorbing energy. And if you recall, there were the sign conventions as well. Exothermic reactions have a negative delta H, endothermic reactions have a positive delta H. And again, we can go even further and say that these reactions have a feeling to them. Exothermic reactions are typically hot, endothermic reactions are typically cold. That is assuming that none of that energy is being used to do work, and that is an assumption we make throughout the chapter. Chemistry classes in the future will fold the work component into this. The last thing I want to point out before we go on, something a little bit new, uh, is that delta H is actually the enthalpy at the end of the reaction, or the final enthalpy, minus the enthalpy at the beginning of the reaction. So this would be initial. And this will be something that will help us to code the sign convention in the graphs a little bit later on in the video today. So let's get into the actual meat of the conversation then. What is an enthalpy diagram? Well, an enthalpy diagram at its heart is simply a graph. And it's a graph that shows the enthalpy changes during a chemical reaction. On the x-axis, we plot the reaction progress. Basically, we have the beginning and the ending, the final and the initial. And on the y-axis, we plot the enthalpy. And this is actually H, not delta H. So we don't actually typically know where we are height-wise on the graph, but we do know how far up and how far down the graph we go, which will be represented as our delta H value. What this basically does for us is it shows graphically how energy is either used up or released through the entire process in the reaction. And we can either see the graph move in an upward direction or we can see the graph move in a downward direction and have a good idea of what happened in the process. Basically, was it exothermic or was it endothermic? So let's take a look at our first example here. Again, we're going to go back to the example from our previous video. Uh, this is the combustion of methane gas, or CH4. This has a negative value for delta H, which tells us this reaction is exothermic, or it's going to give off heat or feel hot. We can represent this graphically with what's going to be our first enthalpy diagram. We show a line here at this height to represent the enthalpy, the total enthalpy that our reactants have. And that's what these guys are. They're the reactants. And then we draw a line lower down here to show the total enthalpy of our products, the CO2 and the H2O, and we draw this dashed line here to represent that there's a transition between the two of those. We're actually going to modify this later in the chapter. Now, the total enthalpies are represented as these two heights on the graph, but again, total enthalpy, or H, is not something we can typically measure. What is important in this graph is the difference between the two levels, or the final enthalpy value minus the initial enthalpy value, which equals the change in enthalpy. And because the final value is a smaller number than the initial value, when we calculate delta H as H sub F minus H sub I, we get a, a little number minus a big number, which is why we tend to get negative values 
for exothermic reactions in delta H. So again, we've now come up with a way of graphically representing what a reaction looks like energy-wise by drawing the chemical reactants and products at different heights and representing the changes in those heights as a reflection of the value of delta H. We can do this again for the same reaction that we had in a previous video, where H2O liquid goes to H2O2 gas. In this case, the delta H is positive, which means it is endothermic. And as a result of that, we get a very different looking graph. In this case, the initial enthalpy, H sub I, is a lower value. Our final enthalpy, H sub F, is a higher value. And again, our change in enthalpy, delta H, is equal to the final minus the initial, and as a result of that, a larger number minus a smaller number gets us a positive value as an answer. And again, we don't know what these values are, but we do know that the difference in these two levels is the difference between the two values, which is equal to our value of delta H. Now you'll notice in this particular reaction, the delta H value magnitude of 40 is significantly smaller, and we can reflect that in our diagrams by drawing this distance as a larger or smaller distance. But at the end of the day, it's really just a matter of making sure you have the right heights. Is it a high product and a low reactant, or vice versa? And that's always going to correspond back to the sign of delta H. So before I toss you at a uh, example problem, I think it's really quick to summarize some of the ideas here. There's only ever two types of enthalpy diagrams that you're going to draw. You're going to draw one of these guys with a low starting value and a high finishing value or vice versa. Remember that this is our initial value and this is our final value. If delta H is final minus initial, this is going to be a scenario where delta H is positive and this reaction is going to be endothermic. What I'm basically saying here is that all endothermic reactions are set up in this way and they're going to look like this. The only thing you have to modify from reaction to reaction is how big the value of delta H actually is. Likewise, if this is our initial here, and this is our final here, the final value minus the initial value is going to give us a delta H value that's always negative, which means this reaction is always exothermic. So all exothermic plots or enthalpy diagrams always have this particular shape to them. And again, the only thing you're responsible for is deciding how big of a gap to draw between the two levels that's determined by the magnitude of the value of delta H. So the sine determines which graph to draw, and the magnitude of the value determines how big the gap is or how big the value of delta H is. With all that in mind, here are two examples for you to take a look at. Over here, I've got an example of a reaction. Uh, nitrogen gas plus oxygen gas reacts to make two, two moles of nitrogen monoxide, and here's the value of delta H. And then likewise over here, uh, sulfur tetrafluoride reacts with water to create sulfur dioxide and hydrofluoric acid. And again, this has its delta H value. Given the information from the previous page, you should be able to draw enthalpy diagrams that not only reflect the sine of delta H in terms of their shape, but also the magnitude of delta H in terms of the size of the numbers involved in each case. Pause the video, give these problems a try, and we'll go over answers in a moment. So here are some quick answers to the reactions that we did. Uh, because the sign of this reaction was positive, we chose the endothermic version of the thing where the products have more internal energy than the reactants do. Therefore, the difference being the final minus the initial gets us a positive value. I also labeled the delta H value as the gap in between them, and I drew it relatively small because relative to the 828, this gap is a smaller one. Likewise, over here, the negative sign of delta H meant that we were releasing energy in the process. That meant the products have less energy in them than the reactions we started with, and that excess energy is released. Uh, I drew using the exothermic version of the graph, and I drew a relatively large gap between the two of those because the value 828 is significantly larger than the 181. And again, these are the really the only two factors you're looking at. The sign determines the shape of the graph, 
and the number determines the size of the actual gap between the two levels. And you should be able to draw these graphs relative to one another, keeping in mind I have no idea how big this actual gap is, I just drew it so this one was bigger and this one is smaller to reflect the difference in the sizes of the numbers. And that's pretty much it. Uh, at this place in the game, you should be able to express the energy moving in the chemical reaction with enthalpy diagrams. I should be able to show you a reaction with a value of delta H, and you should be able to translate into one of these graphs. Uh, and then you should be able to draw these diagrams not only accurately, but with relative spacing. That should represent the magnitude of the delta H value, i.e. the size of the gap, and the sine of delta H, whether the graph slopes up or the graph slopes down.